and today I wanted to detail how a long-standing vitamin D deficiency contributes to hypertension or high blood pressure. Adequate vitamin D levels properly activate the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, a series of reactions designed to regulate blood pressure and electrolytes. And a vitamin D deficiency is a good example of when this system is improperly activated, because when this happens, the kidneys secrete the enzyme renin, and renin works with the hormone angiotensin to raise blood pressure and promote the secretion of aldosterone, another hormone that stimulates the kidneys to both retain sodium and excrete potassium. So the consequential increase of sodium in the blood leads to water retention, which then increases the blood pressure. Elevated levels of parathyroid hormone are also a part of this, as elevated parathyroid increases arterial stiffness and calcification, both of which certainly contribute to hypertension. In primary hyperparathyroidism, there's an enlargement of one or more of the parathyroid glands, which leads to an overproduction of the parathyroid hormone, high levels of calcium in the blood, and hypertension. There's actually a high prevalence of type 2 diabetes in those with primary hyperparathyroidism, and this makes sense because while insufficient vitamin D is a hallmark of hyperparathyroidism, it's also found quite frequently in those with insulin resistance, which is the distinguishing factor behind type 2 diabetes. Low serum calcium resulting from a vitamin D deficiency leads to secondary elevation of the parathyroid hormone, which then causes an increase in intracellular calcium, which affects the maturation of fat cells and inhibits the function of GLUT4, which then impairs insulin-mediated glucose uptake. Conversely, consistent intake of vitamin D sharply reduces renin synthesis while also balancing parathyroid hormone activity. Magnesium is also a critical part of this equation, as magnesium activates the liver enzymes that convert vitamin D from its liver storage form calcidiol into its active form calcitriol. It's what I call try or die. And if you're deficient in magnesium, as most of us are, any vitamin D you take in from sunshine, food, or supplements stays in the liver as calcidiol. Beyond activating vitamin D, magnesium also promotes the release of the heart hormone atrial natriuretic peptide, which inhibits the secretion of renin and the production of aldosterone, while also relaxing smooth muscles in the blood vessels and stabilizing both the heart rhythm and parathyroid hormone activity. All of these contribute to blood pressure, so once again, you can really see here just how indispensable of a companion magnesium really is. Remember that vitamin D is fat soluble. So look for it ideally in a soft gel or even a fat-based liquid. And as for a dose, try taking around 5,000 IU every day at the same time as 500 milligrams of magnesium. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.